thank you for tuning in today. I am excited to be here today to answer the question, is the Instant Pot really worth it? As you can see, if you're watching on video, I do have an Instant Pot, and I know many, many, many folks have Instant Pots at home. Um, but the question remains, is it worth taking up space in your kitchen with an Instant Pot? Whether you are thinking about getting one or whether you already have one, there is something here for you today. I'm gonna to start today's episode off with some background about the Instant Pot, what it is, how it works, what you need to know. Um, then I'm gonna go into the pros and cons of the Instant Pot. And then finally at the end, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time answering some common questions and issues that people have in case you're struggling to make your Instant Pot work for you. Let's get started. So first and foremost, what is an Instant Pot? An Instant Pot is fantastic marketing for something that is actually pretty basic, which is that it is an electric pressure cooker. Pressure cookers have been around for hundreds of years at this point, and many of us have probably seen them in like our grandma's kitchen that you would use on the stove top and you lock, and there was all this danger of potentially having it explode on you. Luckily, the Instant Pot is a step up from that in that it is electric, it is super heat efficient, and they have put a lot of safety uh, features into place that make it a little bit less precarious than those stovetop pressure cookers of days of yore. So the Instant Pot is an electric pressure cooker. There are many, many of them on the market. I will start off by saying that most of what I'm gonna share here today applies to all electric pressure cookers, though the Instant Pot is the one that I have. And secondly, I will say that I think Instant Pot has done a fantastic job of marketing. I am actually pretty jealous of them and I wish that I had thought of it. Um, it's a great name for a product that is actually pretty basic. And I want to debunk some of the myths though around this instant idea. So despite its name, it is not entirely instant. And that doesn't mean that it's not something you should have. It just means that you should know how it works going in so that you can understand and have clear expectations around how long food is really going to take to cook. So secondly, why would somebody need an instant pot? My favorite use for the instant pot, the reason I love it the most, especially as a busy mom, is that it makes for hands-off cooking. This is a lot like a slow cooker, so if you already have one of those, you're familiar with this concept that you kind of do the pre-work, and then you need to pay very little attention to get your food actually made, dinner in most cases in my house. And for me, that is the main feature that draws me to things like the Instant Pot, a slow cooker, other electric pressure cookers. The Instant Pot is also great for folks who often find themselves in a bind when it comes to dinner time. So if you are the type of person who has a stock freezer, maybe you have some like frozen chicken in there, or you have some meat that you forgot to defrost, and it's dinner time and you're like, oh no, what am I gonna do for dinner now? Then the Instant Pot could be a really awesome solution for you. One of the things that I love about pressure cookers as opposed to slow cookers is that you can start meat from frozen, and because the heat rises so quickly, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes, it helps the meat to get out of that temperature danger zone and helps it defrost really quickly and get to the cooking portion of things. So you can cook frozen meat in the Instant Pot and that is one of the main uses that we use it for in my house. So it's really good for people who need hands-off cooking, who often find themselves in a bind when it comes to dinner time. And finally, it's great for folks who want lots of flavor in a short amount of time. One of the benefits of the high pressure system of the Instant Pot the fact that it's bringing the temperature higher than it would normally get under regular conditions is that you are gonna get a lot more flavor development, um, both from the fact that you can brown things, but also because it's a higher cooking temperature, a lot of flavors are developing in a really short amount of time. So if I think about something like a chili or even a bone broth that I would normally cook for something like 24 hours for bone broth, I can get the same result in about two hours in the pressure cooker because of its pressure system, and I get a lot of gelatin in that bone broth. So if you're a bone broth fan, that might be another reason that you want an Instant Pot. And like I said, we're gonna talk about this shorter amounts of time in a little bit. I do find the Instant Pot to be a faster cooking technique in that I could make, say, a brisket in like 55 minutes under pressure versus a couple of hours in the oven, but sometimes it's not as obvious as folks try to make it out to be, and I'm gonna dig into a little bit of that nuance around how long things actually take to cook in the pressure cooker in just a little bit here. 
So the final thing I want to cover before we dive into the pros and cons is how does the pressure cooker actually work? This might seem not important to you if you already have a pressure cooker, but I do want to cover it because I think it helps to clarify some of these questions around like, how is this working and what does it do and do I actually want one? So to better understand the pressure cooker, I went to one of my favorite cooking nerd books, which is On Food and Cooking by Harold McGee, and he explains this about the pressure cooker. Think about it this way. If you raise your oven temperature from 300 degrees to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, your casserole is going to cook faster and need to be in the oven for a shorter amount of time. Since you can't raise the boiling point of water by just boiling it longer, you need the assistance of something else, in this case pressure from captured steam, to make it hotter and work faster. So that's how your Instant Pot is working. And just one thing to note is that the Instant Pot operates at 11.6 psi rather than 15 psi, um, and that is different than a stovetop pressure cooker. So it actually cooks the food at 242 degrees Fahrenheit rather than 250 degrees Fahrenheit as stated earlier. All right, so what are the pros and cons of the Instant Pot? I told you earlier that I'm gonna help you answer this question, do I really need an Instant Pot? And the truth is, is that the answer is maybe, or perhaps it's, it depends. It depends on how much space you have in your kitchen. It depends on the type of cooking that you like to do. It depends on whether you'll actually lug this big, heavy thing out of wherever it's stored when you need to use it. There are lots of dependencies. So the best I can do is give you some pros and cons to help you decide whether you really need an Instant Pot in that you are going to buy one or that you are gonna keep the one that you already have. Let's dive into that. So pros of the Instant Pot. One pretty basic one is that it's more energy efficient. Because this cooking area is insulated, it uh, uses less energy to come up to temperature. So energy efficiency would be one benefit of the Instant Pot. Um, I've already mentioned, but I love that you can cook foods from frozen in a pressure cooker like the Instant Pot, and so that's a really big benefit for me, where I keep a stocked freezer, but I don't always think so far ahead to actually defrost the food before it's time or worse I'll remember the night before and then by the time dinner comes it's still not defrosted all the way and then it's really easy to throw it into the instant pot and cook it just a touch longer to get it cooked through all the way and safely also important another thing I love about the instant pot is that it's hands off so because naturally it's under pressure it locks and when it's sealed you can't open the lid there is actually nothing for you to do and it's all timed on the front of it so if you get a good recipe if you do a little bit of the pre-work and then you set the time correctly, there is almost nothing that you need to do in that amount of time that it's cooking. And this is really, really good for busy parents. So I love it for busy parents for that reason. Another thing that I love about the Instant Pot is um, you're gonna see if you're watching on video on YouTube or Facebook that my Instant Pot's really dirty because it is well loved. I need an Instant Pot. Um, so it is not pretty and brand new, but life. So <laughs> I love that the Instant Pot insert is stainless steel. One of the things that bugs me a lot about a lot of pressure cookers is that they have a nonstick coating, which is for good reason. It makes it really easy to clean. But because we avoid nonstick for the most part in our house, I love that the standard pot that comes with the Instant Pot is stainless steel. And so it's a really safe container for my family to be eating food out of, eating food that's cooked in it out of, however you want to say that. It's safe. Um, the other cool thing about the stainless steel is that it is dishwasher safe, so I can just rinse the inside pot out and throw it in my dishwasher, which makes for really fast cleaning, something I'll come back to in a minute. And there is a saute function on the Instant Pot. So right down here, there is a saute button, and it'll give you 30 minutes you can always extend it, 30 minutes of saute time, so it's heating just from the bottom, and you don't need to put the lid on to bring it to pressure. What's really cool about this, and is different from many slow cookers that I've utilized in the past, is that often with like a slow cooker, because it doesn't have this function, you need to cook something separately on the stove if you want to brown it and develop flavor before putting it into the slow cooker. And for me, that's just like a step too far. It's an extra pan to clean. The whole point of using something like this is to have everything in one place. So I love that I can brown meat, that I can saute things before I make a soup, all of those kinds of things directly in my Instant Pot, thanks to the saute function. 
A couple other things that I love, this is not Instant Pot fangirl moment, I have some things I don't like too, but uh, the Instant Pot develops such great flavor in saucy foods. And we're going to come back to this concept of saucy foods, but think things like braises or um, uh, soups, stews, even rice, those kinds of things cook really well in the Instant Pot because it develops a lot of flavor and it kind of like thickens the sauces really nicely. I love the result of cooking in the Instant Pot for those types of foods. But that said, it's not great for everything. We're going to get to that in the cons list. I think that's a common mistake that folks make also. And then finally, another thing that I love about the Instant Pot is that it has this keep warm function. Many slow cookers will have this too, so it's not unique specifically to the Instant Pot, but it is unique to this like electric cooker situation. So on the front here, there's a keep warm button. The keep warm automatically activates when your cooking time is done. So when the pressure is coming, once the pressure has come down, it, um, goes to keep warm and that keeps your food at a food safe temperature according to the instant pot website uh the temperature operates between 145 and 172 so it's holding your food outside of this temperature danger zone where bacteria is most likely to develop but it's not continuing to cook your food and so if you were to say pressure cook some chili <laughs> before going to work and then you didn't want to take it out and cool it and heat it up again at dinner, you could let it automatically go to keep warm and it would keep your food warm for 10 hours automatically in that safety zone. So you get home from sports practice, you open up the lid, the pressure will be released and you can serve directly from the Instant Pot. This in my book is worth the money alone, especially if you're buying on a deal like Prime Day and all the ways that people are buying Instant Pots for even cheaper. The other cool thing to know about the Instant Pot is that you can manually set the keep warm setting for up to 99 hours and 50 minutes. This is something I've never done or needed to do and that's like over, over three days, practicing my math, over three days of keeping warm in that safety zone. So if you were like a big rice fan and you wanted to just keep it warm and serve it directly out of there, you could extend the amount of keep warm time and safely store your food in here and serve it directly from the Instant Pot. So that might be a reason alone that something like the Instant Pot is good for you and your family. So now that I've fangirled all over the Instant Pot, I want to tell you some of the cons and some of the reasons that I might recommend that folks don't actually need an Instant Pot. So the first thing is that despite the name, despite the fantastic marketing, which I already noted, uh, the Instant Pot isn't truly instant in that it takes time for that water to heat up, to come under pressure, to trap the steam and come to that 242 degree Fahrenheit temperature that we talked about earlier. And that doesn't happen instantly. So when I first got my Instant Pot, I was always wondering, like, it says that my brown rice is only taking 22 minutes to cook. That was what I was setting the pressure for. And yet 40 minutes later, I'd still be waiting on the rice. So the process of bringing the water to pressure can actually take a little while. I've had upwards of 10 minutes and even longer, depending on the temperature of the food and the temperature of the water that goes into the container. So it's not a total fine art. And if you are really in a crunch for dinner time, you're going to want to make sure that you take into account the temperature of the food and how long it will take to come to pressure because that under pressure time that you're cooking it for isn't the only factor. So you need to learn to account for the time that it takes to bring the ingredients to pressure. And this can take from three to 30 minutes, depending on the method that you're using. Um, one site that I love is hip pressure cooking and in their pressure cooker troubleshooter, they say that like frozen ingredients could take 20 to 30 minutes to reach pressure. So one way I found to combat that if you are really trying to get things to cook as quickly as possible in the instant pot is to add boiling water or add a warm liquid instead of a cold liquid when you're adding the liquid to your instant pot. You will always need at least I have found one cup of liquid and if you make that warm versus cold then it will likely come to pressure faster. Um, an example that I did, I will link to a blog post that I did a while back in today's show notes, which are going to be at cookingwithafullplate.com slash Instant Pot Pros and Cons. And in that post, I tested out bringing 
two turnips in one cup of water to pressure. I found that room temperature water came to pressure in seven minutes and 41 seconds before it got to that pressure cooking time and boiling water came to pressure in four minutes and 46 seconds. So you can see that this can make a big difference if you're looking for something instant. But if I am cooking turnips, let's say for five minutes and it takes even five minutes to come to pressure, five minutes to cook under pressure, and then five minutes to natu naturally release, which is what it took, then even in the best case scenario, it's still 15 minutes of cooking, not just the five minutes that you might have in your head. So um, I think that's an important thing to consider is like if you're impatient, if you're really looking for something instant, then maybe like microwave freezer meals are for you. I hate to say that, but it's true. Like the Instant Pot is just not super instant all the time. It's faster, but it's not instant. Um, the second thing that I've heard from folks is that the Instant Pot is obviously bulky. It's large to store. They do have smaller models than this one that I'm showing, which is the Instant Pot IP Duo. I believe this is the six quart, I think. Um, and mine is really not clean. And that's because I've just, given up on cleaning it really well and it's like a well-loved well-utilized piece of our kitchen so i'm not so stressed on how it looks but if i were i could see how i could get frustrated about like cleaning where the lid seals um can be really really tricky and mine is pretty dirty the inside container can be really hard to keep clean if you are fanatical about wanting like shiny bright mirror surfaces this might not be for you and the lid has a number of like cracks and crevices that can be a little bit tricky to clean too. The other thing I have experienced and I often hear is if you are cooking both sweet and savory things in your Instant Pot, there's this sealing ring that's made out of silicone and it can really trap flavors, especially if you're cooking like Indian food or um, something very aromatic in it. And so I have actually taken to, I got this advice and I'll link to these in the show notes, cookingwithfullplate.com slash Instant Pot pros and cons. Um, I bought extra silicone rings, one blue and one red that came in a pack, and I used the blue one for sweet and the red one for savory so that I'm not getting that cross-contamination of flavors. But it can be frustrating and it can be tricky, and this is something I see come up a lot around like the storage of the Instant Pot. Like If you're not using it all the time, it takes up a lot of space, and secondly, the cleaning of it. The other con of the Instant Pot is that it's maybe not as straightforward as other cooking methods in that because you are bringing things to pressure, there are some finicky details that you need to pay attention to. So one of those details is that you are going to need enough liquid to come to pressure in order to create that steam and raise the boiling point of the water and actually cook the food. So it's not as straightforward as just like taking a recipe from somewhere else and throwing it in. HitPressureCooking.com, the one that I mentioned earlier, they actually have a pressure cooker conversion cheat sheet that I will link to in the show notes. Um, but the best thing to do when you're starting out with the Instant Pot is to start with tried and true recipes. There is a Facebook group online, it's called Instant Pot Community, and there are almost 2 million <laughs> people in that community as of the time that I'm recording this, and they can be a really good resource for tried and tested recipes. The one thing that I'll note is that just because the Instant Pot, it can cook healthy food, doesn't mean that that's what everyone's cooking in it. Hello, real life. So you need to be a little bit discerning if you're trying to cook healthier versions, and there are some good resources that I'll link to in the show notes as well, but just know it's best to start out with recipes until you get the hang of how the Instant Pot works, and for some of us, we might be using uh, recipes forever, and that's fine too. <clears throat> Another thing to note is that if you are really looking to feed like a big crowd, the Instant Pot has a max fill line, and if you're cooking things like pasta in it, it has an even lower max fill line, so you can't use the full space of the pressure cooker every single time, depending on what you're cooking, because it creates like foam and steam that fills up more than other things do. So if you are cooking for a large crowd, you might need to consider that you would want to get an even larger version of the Instant Pot. Or if you're getting the small one, I think there's like a three quart one that is so, so cute. Um, just consider that if you're cooking for a family of four, you probably want to go with the average size one because you can't necessarily fill it up as much as you think. Plus, like, think about beans, they expand when they're cooking and they get bigger and you wouldn't want to have it so full that those are overflowing and ruining the seal of your Instant Pot. 
And the other thing that I'll note in terms of cons for the Instant Pot is just that it's not great for cooking everything. This is not its fault. Like, no one method is great for cooking everything. I don't normally boil chicken, and so it's not fair to say that my stove isn't a good way to cook chicken just because that one method doesn't work. The same is true for the Instant Pot. If you are not a fan of like stews and saucy things and like lots of liquids in your food, the Instant Pot might not be for you. If grilled chicken is what you want, you are not going to want to pressure cook chicken because what you're gonna get is tender chicken, yes, but really like shredded chicken that's best in say, buffalo wing sauce. I'll link to my recipe for that in the show notes. Um, that's a really great Instant Pot recipe. On the flip side, like, Pan fried shrimp isn't a great Instant Pot recipe. It's gonna cook the shrimp for too long. Um, it would be really hard to not cook them for too long, and it's not gonna get that browning unless you're browning them first, in which case the shrimp is basically already cooked. So again, not the fault of the Instant Pot that it doesn't cook everything great, but I just like folks to know that like it does result in pretty similar recipes most of the time. Yes, you can use beef or chicken or fish or, um, beans or rice or all of these different things and there are ways to play around with it but if you're going in thinking that the instant pot is the be all and all most magical cooking appliance ever that's going to cook everything for you I have bad news it's not so just consider that when you're deciding whether you want an instant pot or not so those are my pros and cons for do I really need an instant pot you may have guessed by now by the state of my Instant Pot, if you are watching this on video, that I think an Instant Pot is a great addition to your kitchen appliances. It cooks a lot of things, it's very hands-off, it's reliable, um, it keeps things warm for a long time. I often find that if I like cook something and then let it stay warm, that it's almost like having my own personal chef, just I did the pre-work, but then I've, it's been so long I've forgotten about it. So those are our real benefits of the Instant Pot, but it's not for everyone. If you are short on space, if you don't love saucy things, if you are really expecting it to cook things so, so quickly, like be really instant, then perhaps it's not the magical device that you are looking for. And I hope that sharing some of this perspective is giving you ideas around whether the Instant Pot is the right thing to take up space with or not in your kitchen. So if you are already an Instant Pot owner and you want just like a little bit more detail on um, some of the most common questions that I get, I'm gonna dive into those now. If you are already convinced and you're gonna go buy an Instant Pot on Amazon, then Thanks for listening today. Um, but let's talk about some of these most common questions and then I will direct you to some of my favorite resources. If you, let's say, are one of the thousands of people that I see in that two million person group who are like, I bought an Instant Pot and it's still in the box, then this section's for you. So first of all, since this is Feel Good Family Food and we talk all about healthy food, let's talk a little bit about is food in the Instant Pot healthier? The answer is, it depends. Um, there's no clear data on it. I used to be a little bit resistant to the idea of pressure cooking because it was like newer and I'm always thinking like what did our ancestors do and they cook things low and slow over the fire. Um, but there is some evidence that uh, pressure cooking actually retains nutrients better than other forms of cooking because all of the liquid that the nutrients are going into is retained in the food. So you're actually eating those nutrients again. So that's something for your consideration. The other thing that I've been listening to and thinking a lot about is this idea of anti-nutrients in our foods. This is things like phytic acid. Um, there's a book called Plant Paradox, and I'm not remembering the author of the book right now, but I will link to that in the show notes. And he talks all about how eating things like raw kale is actually not healthy for us because these plants, rice included, other grains, have phytic acid and other compounds that are meant to protect them, but they're not actually great for us. The cool news is that pressure cooking rice or beans or sometimes even vegetables can actually highly reduce those phytic acid compounds in our food. And so it may actually be making the food more digestible for us rather than worrying about like those nutrients that we might lose in the higher pressure system. So food for thought if you are concerned about the health of pressure cooking. I mentioned earlier that not all Instant Pot recipes are healthy, of course. Um, there's two million plus owners, two million people just in a Facebook group about the Instant Pot. So there's lots of fans, which means there are lots of different kinds of recipes. And truthfully, finding healthier Instant Pot recipes can sometimes be a little bit tricky. 
So rather than giving you lots of resources here, I'm going to link in the show notes to some of my favorite sources for healthy instant pot recipes. Some of them may be ones that you recognize, things like SkinnyTaste.com, um, Nom Nom Paleo, there's this site Dad Cooks Dinner that has a cool roundup, and I'll put all, the, all those links in the show notes at cookingwithfullplate.com slash Instant Pot Pros and Cons. You're going to be tired of that by the time I'm done with this episode. So another question I often get is like, what is the best food to cook in an Instant Pot? I'm trying to decide if I want one or I already have one, like what should I be cooking? So I'm going to share with you some of my favorites, and again, I will link in the show notes to some recipes for these things which is what I'm going to talk about next. So um, things that I love to cook in the Instant Pot. I love putting a whole chicken in. I just did a cool ranch chicken, which was like taco and ranch seasoning that I made myself, rubbed the chicken with it, put it all in the Instant Pot, cooked it for about 25 minutes. It was done, and then we shredded that chicken. We used it in enchiladas and tacos and on salad, and it was like a super easy, like five-minute meal prep thing that you could do at the beginning of the week to have a healthy protein all week long. So that's one cool thing. Hard boiled eggs are another thing that people who love the Instant Pot love to cook in their Instant Pot. I must admit that though I wrote a post and analyzed how long it takes to cook eggs on the stove top versus in the Instant Pot, I actually prefer the stove top to the Instant Pot. Sorry. It's just, it's a lot to take out and use, but hard boiled eggs are something that people really love. Other things that I love to cook in the Instant Pot, I love cooking beans from dried, even if you don't soak them ahead of time, that makes them really digestible and cooks them up really quickly. I make brown rice in my Instant Pot all the time. I will link to a post that I did around soaked brown rice. If you're really worried about those phytates, you can um, soak it ahead of time, make it really digestible, and then cook it in the Instant Pot, and you have like a double whammy of digestibility of grains. Um, what are some other things? I've already talked a lot about like chilies and stews. I do a pulled buffalo chicken in the Instant Pot. Um, even just like steaming sweet potatoes is a really good way to use it. Really the possibilities are endless. The next question that folks often have is like, well, how do I cook X in the Instant Pot or how long does it need to cook for? And my answer is when you are starting out with the Instant Pot and maybe forever, you are going to want to find recipes. And the reason for that is that it can be a little bit tricky. There are folks who have tested things lots of times. I'll link in the show notes to some of my favorite recipe resources for using the Instant Pot, including some recipes that I've developed and use all the time. And I hope that that will be helpful as you get your feet under you, test the Instant Pot, take away some of that fear of um, using your Instant Pot, especially if it's still in the box in your house. That said, also in the show notes, I'm gonna include a link to my Instant Pot cheat sheet. At that Instant Pot cheat sheet, I have put some of my favorite like beginner recipes and then next level recipes. So if you are ready for getting started, if you have your Instant Pot and you want to get started with it, you can get that cheat sheet and find some of the beginner recipes and also like learn some of the basics. But if you're more advanced and you're ready for, let's say like pot in pot method, which is where you use containers to cook multiple things at a time, this is like next level stuff. Um, you can also find links to some of those favorite recipes in my Instant Pot cheat sheet, which you'll find at the show notes. If you are feeling a little bit intimidated, if you have an Instant Pot, you want to understand more about it before you get started, I also have a blog post, 10 things to know about your new Instant Pot that I will link to in the show notes that will hopefully get you over some of these things. It's going to talk more about the key form function and how the pressure cooker works and why it's not as dangerous as your grandma might lead you to believe and other things that folks are often wondering. That's all I've got for today. As your one action from this episode, I would love to know, do you have an Instant Pot and what are you going to make in it? inspired by this episode. So if you've decided not to get an Instant Pot, hop on over to Healthy Food for Busy Families on Facebook or Cooking with a Full Plate on Instagram and let me know that I helped you make that decision. And if you have an Instant Pot, I would love to hear what next recipe you are going to try in the Instant Pot inspired by the knowledge that you gained from this episode today. Uh, I'd love to see you take a step forward in your Instant Pot cooking. Try something new. Maybe try the pot and pot method or something a little bit different now that you understand the Instant Pot a little bit better. Thank you so much for listening today. I'll be back again next Tuesday. And in the meantime, if you wouldn't mind taking a minute to leave a review, I would be forever grateful. Thank you so much for your support. I'll talk to you again soon.